พระสมเด็จวัดระฆังพิมหลวงวิจารลองรักลองชาติ authenticated and certificated amulet from the Association of Amulets of Siam Thailand number 2538 this is a perfect example of พระสมเด็จวัดระฆังพิมเกตทลดสมพร้อมดูช่างหลวงวิจารณ์ official artisan of block press creators artisans of สมเด็จพระพุทธเจ้าโตพรหมังสีโอ้อวัดระฆังโคสิตารามนี่คือพิมพ์เกตทลุดสม which means uh, top not piercing the arch which you can see and we're now having a general look at the appearance of a พระสมเด็จวัดระฆังอบสมเด็จโตอบจะชังลงวิจารณ์อาร์ติซันด้วยดอกเบี้ยอังกฤษลักเกอร์อัฟิกซ์ที่ถูกเปลี่ยนเป็นดีอัฟิกซ์ในบางจุดที่ช่วยให้เราดูการเปลี่ยนของดอกเบี้ยซานสักดิ์พาวเดอร์คอนเทนต์ที่ต่างกันของทุกประเภทพระสมเด็จวัดระฆังที่ฉันจะสามารถให้คุณดูด้วยการแสดงให้มีหลายตัวอย่างหลายตัวอย่างที่สามารถพบได้ Uh, Chang Long Wijan was a teacher of Chang Long City Gan and Chang Long Wijit, so he was the head teacher of the Chang Sip Mo of the Ten Villages group of artisans, which were the royal group of artisans. As we can see, the rear face has very heavily affixed ancient red lacquer, and of course, the Muan San content. We will be taking some. A good look at some very close-up macro images to examine the content and the look of the agedness of Pat Somdet b a d r a k a n g of Somdet Do and of the Pim Chang Lung w i j a n and of the red lacquer, the ingredients, the characteristics of aging. Uh, further observations because of the various kinds of pratsum dead clean ones, lacquered ones, ones with black lacquer, red lacquer, red and gold lacquer, black and gold lacquer, those which are clean, those which are yellowish, those which are whitish, and the various components which should be found within, and how to examine the aging of lacquer, and the content. Of the Monsan powders of p a s o m d e p o d a k a n g which can vary and do vary, but which always have certain ingredients present. Although they may have more uh, tang oil in them, more or less tang oil in them, they may have been released directly at Badrakang, or they may have been placed in g r o u uh, buried within a chedi, so they may have c r a b g r o u on them, or they may not have. They may have been lacquered or not lacquered, and so on. So we'll be taking a good look and a much closer look than this at the Monsan. But first of all, we are going to admire the Pratsom d e t b a d r a k a n g p i m g e t a l u t s u m from the Chang Lung w i c h a n artisan in Long Rak Long Chat version, which was certificated as Long Rak Long Chat Big Tong with red lacquer. And uh, gold leaf, of which there is hardly any to be remain visible. Some were just red lacquered. <coughs> and so you look at the edges of the amulet, and you can see they look like megaliths. They look aged, not straight, from the hand pressing and from the contraction over the well over a century and a half, 160 years or so. Of um, contraction, where the moisture uh, is emitted and the clay contracts, and this is where you get this marble d e f e c t on some. Those which had more b l u e h o i b l u e k h o i those which had more um, seashell powder in, you will see a lot of contraction, and with him s i l a t i k u n crystals. You see a lot of contraction around the chunks of h i n s i l a t i k u n crystalline substance on the edges and in the backs, which you can see a chunk in the bottom 
on the right hand side of the screen the bottom of the amulet so at the bottom right hand side of the screen you can see a chunk of Hinsi Lati Kun within the Muen San of the real place here we see these megalith like edges again with the contractions and visible portions of pieces of Muen San the red spots from um, Pat Gamping Pit the black spots from Bailan powders and from Kwe Nam Thai which is a kind of banana so the seeds from the bananas because he used banana to mix into the clay to make it creamy and Pluyak Hoi which is a seashell powdered seashell a very fine powder as well as his Pong we say it Ha Yang Ha Chanit his five kinds of sacred powders which were made of course from yantra powders which I have explained in other podcasts how yantra powders are made and here we see the close-up macro images of the red ancient Chinese lacquer and you can see a powdery substance affixed which if you scratched with your thumbnail or the tip of a pen or a knife would not come off it is so deeply affixed and that is the blue koi the pong putakun the yantra powders rising up to the surface which are finer than the more you see the red spot here from uh, Prat Gamping Pet from the Gamping Pet red clay amulet some that throw bashed up into the Munsan clay and the black lines the black taints within the marbled lines which is of course the Bailan powders and any black spots you might see might be but pieces of banana seed or pieces of patat dam, black patat like lye type substance which was found within the Gamping Pet amulets which were bashed up into the Monsan by some lit to. and here we can see uh, a lot of powder has formed on the surface come through the lacquer as the moisture has come out and affixed itself next to the pragaid which is the top knot of the Buddha which as we look at the arch we can see the crinkles and also the surface appearance of the pinkish powders and the lacquer the powders which are white powders turn pinkish from the red lacquer and the yellowish quite a lot of oil in this particular model um, Monsan clay which is so contracted along the arch as we see here and we can see the unevenness of the surface as some parts of the surface is pure moon sand powders and some is covered in lacquer with powder risen up through it as the moisture has decreased and the clay has hardened and dried over the centuries and the smoothness of the surface of the face of the Buddha where we can see the most protrusive parts of the amulet have come into contact with the atmosphere and with skin and with the surface of clothing and so on and is the most shiny and uh, well most well worn portion as as we see with the protrusion of the chest but it's also a very very good place to see the ingredients of the moon sahan because this is where they become apparent through the transparency of the shine of, of the surface that has rubbed into smoothness in the protrusive parts here we can see a piece of uh, Pat Gamping Pet and various other pieces of Moon San here we can see through the lacquer the Pong Putakun as it rises up within the arms in the armpits between the chest and the arm the elbow crook of the arm and we can see the wetter surface appearance below the hands as the droplets are still drying and the thinner areas have already dried and as the moon sun pushes through the dais of the Buddha we can see the black lines from the Bailan powders and here we can see the contraction within the arch of the Buddha of the front face of the amulet and the Bailan powders and a piece of red uh, a piece of white hin silati kun and a piece of red camping pet amulet and on the very far left also a piece of hinsilati kun in the 
the center slightly to the left some red gumping pit above the center to the right some brownish substance and to the left of the center some hinsilaticon and right in the middle of the screen a big chunk of hinsilaticon which breaks the arch and here we can see a clearer closer close up as we approach inwards towards the arch look at the unevenness of the arch it is not regular as would be a fake and these kind of contractions are impossible to reproduce in a fake because they can only be produced with the true aging and combined with knowledge of the ingredients of the Muensan is extremely difficult to create a fake real whereas the pin the actual model itself design can be recreated but not the idiosyncrasies and the tiny mistakes and tiny contractions tiny um, changes that have been made through atmospheric change over the years over the 150 plus years 160 plus years of its aging and how uh, deeply affixed the powder is as we look between the armpit and the chest of the Buddha we can see so deep that the fine powders have risen up through the moisture before the lacquer has dried and affixed themselves to the surface of the lacquer. <laughs>